Rudolf Hess had been deputy leader of Nazi Germany, only one place behind Adolf Hitler. From 1933 to 1941, Hess, a World War I infantryman and pilot, had been complicit in all the actions taken by the Nazis against its enemies. This included the promulgation of race laws against the Jews and other groups in German society, and the plans for German territorial expansion that led to the Second World War. But on the 10th of May 1941, Hess flew a Messerschmitt 110 twin-engine fighter to Scotland and landed by parachute. He said he had come on a mission of peace. Arrested and imprisoned by the British, Hess was tried at Nuremberg in 1946 and sentenced to life imprisonment. In 1947, he was transferred to the Ostia Spandau prison in Berlin, where he would remain for the rest of his long life. Initially, he had six other inmates as companions, including top Nazis like Albert Speer, Hitler's armaments minister, and Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, commander of the navy and the last leader of Nazi Germany. But one by one, the six other prisoners were released, either having served their sentences or released early because of ill health. But Deputy Führer Hess remained, one prisoner, in a prison designed to hold 600 he was guarded by four countries who took it in turns. Spandau prison fell under the Four Powers Agreement, signed in 1945, meaning it was under the joint control of the four victorious Allied powers, the United States, Great Britain, France and the Soviet Union, who in turn occupied parts of Germany. The four occupying powers alternated control of the prison on a monthly basis. Each ran it for three months of each year. They flew their flag at the Allied Control Authority building. Each month a handover ceremony took place outside the prison, as a new nationality of soldiers arrived to guard the building and its solitary prisoner. The guard detail consisted of 37 soldiers and an officer. In addition there were four dozen cleaning women, a cook, a doctor, a chaplain and other German staff members. In total, in 1985, it was calculated to cost 670,000 US dollars to guard Hess each year, a cost borne entirely by the West German taxpayers. From 1966 to 1987, Hess was the only inmate in the vast building. But each time the British or the Americans brought up the idea of either releasing Hess or moving him to a different facility, the Soviets vetoed it. Spandau prison was in the British sector of West Berlin, and Hess alive meant Soviet access to West Berlin, something that the KGB was keen to maintain. By the 1980s, prisoner number 7, as Hess was officially called, was allowed a more relaxed lifestyle than previously. He could move freely around the cell block to his own routine and do what he liked to entertain himself, such as reading, gardening, watching films or television. As he became very old and more infirm, a personal medical orderly was assigned to him from 1982 onwards. His daily routine was remarkably unchanged over the course of over 40 years imprisonment. Hess would rise at 6.45 a.m., breakfast an hour later at 7.45, walk 28 rounds of the garden at 10.30, lunch at 11.45, walk again in the garden at 2.30, dine at 5, and retire to bed at 10 p.m. Hess was permitted to write one letter a month and receive one letter a month in return. He was given four censored newspapers each day, but forbidden from reading anything about the Nazis. For security reasons, his cell was shifted constantly, and there were plenty of empty cells to choose from. When he was taken ill or for routine medical checkups, he was taken in a heavily guarded convoy to the British Military Hospital, where an entire wing was closed off. On the 17th of August 1987, Rudolf Hess was found dead inside a summer house in the prison garden. He was 93 years old. A lamp extension cord was strung from a window latch and around his neck, and the British judged that Hess had committed suicide. Many historians and Hess's own family have stated that Hess was murdered by British intelligence. They doubt such an old and frail man could have killed himself in this manner. Whatever the truth of Hess's demise, the British were certainly in a hurry to get rid of Spandau prison. 
The British moved quickly to demolish the prison. It was turned into a car park and a naffy shopping centre for the British Army, the Britannia Centre Spandau, nicknamed Hesco's after the British superstore Tesco. The case of Rudolf Hess, the last prisoner in Spandau, continues to generate debate and conspiracy theories even today, over 30 years after his death. I hope you found this subject interesting. If you have, please do subscribe and also share, and perhaps consider supporting me on Patreon. Many thanks. Thank you.